Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of the F2 Mime Team Mod, episode number 3 of this little mini-series that's going on on the channel out of 5. And yes, of course, we've arrived, of course, we've got the email message, of course, Jeff is well, for, we've also got weather forecast, excuse me, Friday, Colophon will be wet. Um, but with F2, they don't have an intermediate tyre, as we discovered last time out in Austria, there's only dries or wet tyres. So, yes, um, Saturday and Sunday will be dry. Um, but we're here in Britain, and I, th I don't, th I haven't got confidence. We, apart from that Britain short race, we really haven't done very well around this on this track in recent games. For me on this channel, we haven't really done much. So, but yes, without a doubt, let's uh, get this weekend out the way with a start at qualifying. And yes, here's the rain you can see on your screen now. Um, Excuse me, if, I, if I'm a bit sniffly, then I apologise in this video. Um, it is about 4 million degrees outside, and pollen is extremely high, which is triggering a little bit of a cold, slash bit of hay fever, really. But you can see, of course, the AI, well, because there's dry tyres, for them, it's like driving in the uh, dry, for them. They haven't got any problems whatsoever. Um, and again, this is something that probably should be really be addressed really in the future F1 games. I don't, I doubt it will be fixed for F1 2020, but we never know. I mean, F1 2021, but that's something to think about as we start to struggle. P15 is where we are in the race. Make that P14, P13. We are running with a a dry setup, so again, we will be struggling for pace out of the old turn one and as we approach maggots and buckets this will be absolutely terrible and wet um, and we take a little bit more curbing than I'd like and the actual fact it's a lot slower than I'm we remain taking P12 make that P11 so we're actually coming back in this lap which is not too bad open the DRS of course um, as you can see I, I believe that's one of it's one of the dams cars that's in front I'm hoping it's Latifi because Camara is of course one of our championship rifles make that P10 we got on the curving there though back down outside the top 10 it doesn't matter anyway because um, there is no you don't have to use the tyres you qualified on to start a race with if you finish in the top 10 but it looks like we're going to actually be P12 P13 coming out the final corner could have been better our teammates up in P7 as well, um, a second faster than us, but again, I think we're probably in there around about if it had been a dry race, uh, excuse me, a dry qualifying. Sergio Seta Camara annoyingly takes those four points for qualifying. I, th I always think four is a bit successive from Latifi, Delatraz is up there as well. But Nick De Vries, another championship rival, not having a good qualifying, as of course now it's time for today's race, feature race for the bit. British Grand Prix. Welcome to Silverstone, one of the staples of the Formula 2 Championship. It's a firm favourite amongst fans and drivers alike, and we're all keen to see what it has in store for us in today's race. Five miles out from Toaster, this icon of British motorsport heritage comprises 18 corners over 3.6 miles of circuit. Silverstone has been through several changes over its lifetime, with the start line now leading into Abbey, a fast right-hander for Turn 1. But still there, of course, is the circuit's most famous and iconic sequence of corners, starting at Maggots in Turn 10. OK, be wary of the cars ahead breaking suddenly into one. We could ruin our race if we hit them. Good luck. Thank you, Jeff. Um, as we arrive on the grid, it's a, it's a nice sunny afternoon here. Well, sunny evening, because... I don't know, I actually quite like the sunset races. I mean, they're not... They're not they provide some cracking night time as we look at the... I think we're going to pit, pit early than actually recommended. It's not. There's not too much in it. Um, I think the tyre wear 
on the uh, sauce is going to be terrible um, to begin with. So I think we're going to pit early and then make the advantage of the undercut when everybody comes in on lap 6. And then of course the Haas will just last forever because that's what the tyres are. In actual fact we'll be going fast towards the end of the race. So five red lights come on. Go! And, and it's once again an absolutely terrible start. We're going four wide at the start. We're down to P17. It's one of the worst starts there. We have to take avoiding action, going off circuit and eventually come back on. But still, and we're now back up the inside of Schumacher. We're having a look there. We're trying to force off Isla, unfortunately, remaining P15. But that is not the start we were looking for. Now we start making some moves. Sean Galeo's up first in the Prima car. Um, Mick Schumacher as well, he's not had a great time of it. Um, his AI doesn't seem to have much luck in this series and moved to lap 2 now. We're already closing in on Schumacher, but he doesn't give us any space, the German driver. Can we have a look round to the outside? Now he gives us the space round on the outside. We're going to have the outside line, which of course will be the racing line. We're going to give him a little bit of space on the inside, but that's us up into P13. As we look now at Sergio Seta Camera, he is t it lost the lead at the start now. He's down to third place already behind Dalatras and Latifi. See if he needing points, of course, um, if he wants to. Because he, of course, is a lot higher up in the real life F2 season as opposed to what we've got here. So we're now on the back of. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. It looks like a Trident car. Haven't uh, scored many points, and not we? Now we're past uh, De Vries's teammate. Um, so both ARTs, Nikita Mazepan, that's it. Um, both ARPs are not doing well. I believe that was actually a Lacey that we pushed out wide, not uh, Ilot, because I think Ilot is up ahead of us right now. Um, as we get another closer to the our fellow Brit in that um, Cheru's car. Not saddle, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to have a look down the inside of Ilot and move up into the points finally. P10. It's taken four laps for us to get out here after recovering from moving at the Titanic. We look at our teammate now. He's behind uh, the Campos of Jack Aiken, who's doing, having a good season, to be fair. He's got Jordan King behind him. Both of those are having great seasons with good qualifying. So um, I'm sure. As we come into the pits at the end of lap 5, I was thinking about doing a lap. We were thinking about doing an extra lap, but the fronts, all the rears seem good, but the front uh, tyres there, the front left especially, is at 53%. And nobody else is coming into the pits at this lap. So we're, we're pitting early and we're going to get an um, try and get an undercut on the rest of them. It may not work out, but we should be able to then... There will probably be people that pit two laps, maybe. Um, again, it depends what sort of outlap we have, or outlaps, because of course we've still got to see if we can undercut those who are pitting in maybe lap, end of lap uh, 7. Um, who have wonderful tyre wear on their cars as opposed to the ridiculous tyre wear that I've got. But anyway, uh, as we come to lap 7, is it going to work? No, it's not. We'll come back behind. Uh, Mazepan. We're going to get him on the exit though, and Carla Mylot as well. Um, and but interesting though, we have made some mo moves up on. I believe that is Xata Camara, and he's not that actually that far away. So it's it's really about damage limitation. Getting in, the, I'd love to get maybe around. The, f the further up we go, the better, obviously. But and if we get around P8, then we can just stroll away for victory. So. As of course we're right on the tail of why not. It's important that we get this move done so we can have the maximum thing optimum run, excuse me, out of the uh, on pit straight and we make the move down, in, down to the braking zone off one of the bottoms. Quite a little bit wide out of that turn, that turn but um, hopefully we're going to uh, get ahead as there's a whole load of people there. We have made that some positions up into P8 now. And we're going to get P7 actually just ahead of our teammate as well. That is a nice position, nice, nicely timed overtake and nicely positioned. As unfortunately we've got a car that is out, it's one of the Trident ones. 
I'm not sure which one it is, but um, yes, one of them is out. Um, but they haven't really scored any points anyway, so and we remain in P7. But now we're coming up to John, uh, excuse me, Jack Aiken in his Campos car, obviously sponsored by WTF1. He's a Williams test driver now, not Renault, but um, obviously this being 2019, um, he has got the Renault sponsorship at this point. As uh, our teammate is going to have a look, quick look at Aiken as well. Let's see if we can get through because we need the point. Remember, it's not just about the uh, drivers' championship; it's about the teams as well. We need the money. What if we need if we want to front a Formula One challenge next year? But we'll have to wait and see about that. As we watch at the front now, Latifi is starting to run away along with uh, Louis Delatraz. Those two are looking to stretch their legs as we're coming up to Daryl tries his teammate number it's a Machuchitsa um, in the carling he seems to have dropped back a bit I'm not sure what's going on with him whether he's got a little problem but um, we, he did have a sizable gap to us and we've let him up in, in receiving laps up to here and it's not just my place is blistering the fact that we've retained uh, Aiken and this is show are both behind us as you come across the line P5 nonetheless I'll definitely take a P5 from 13th on the grid damn limitation Sata Camara only finished ahead of us in P4 Hubert got a podium um, and Dalatras got the fastest lap in the end um, so those those three really Hubert, Dalatras and Latifi were miles ahead but obviously this is going to do well for us um, now let's see what we can do from 4th on the grid in today's sprint race. We've reversed the top eight from yesterday's race to set the grid for the sprint race here today, and the drivers are almost ready on the grid down below. I'm not the only one sitting here today who's looking forward to today's race. My friend and XGP2 champion Davide Valsecchi next to me is already on the edge of his seat awaiting the start of the event. How's it going today? Hello there, Alex. I'm great, thank you. And very excited to get started. I have a feeling we are in for a very special event today. Space going into the first corner, so try to keep it tidy. Okay, well, thanks for that optimism, Jack. But we got P4. Um, let's see what we can do. Uh, Five lights go, and it's an absolutely terrible start once again. And we're already down to P6, make that P7. We're going to close off Massachusetts. So we're going to try and go around the outside of. Uh, excuse me, of Seta Camara and Huber. We get, we're going to get Huber, it's going to be three wide, but Seta Camara goes through and that allows Delatraz to make the move. And Huber, not as rapid as he was in there. An actual fact, Callum Ilos has got past the Frenchman there now as well. Um, so that's unfortunate for him as we're now going to... Really not a lot happened in this race. Um, we re literally just were catching up to Seta Camara all the time eventually made the move there and made it stick and really it was as we finished for the top four the top five even actually um, not a lot of action around five laps of Silverstone what does that mean for the champion? results well we did finish third we didn't get the fastest lap we were shaved off there by Latifi by a tenth so he gets an extra two points for his collection I mean he did win there a great job by Callum lot he gets one point, a vital point for Chiruz in their battle at the bottom with our Trident. Um, but of course, Zhang Yuzhu won as well, his second. In, firmly in control, really, even though it was two tenths of Aiken and Match Sheets as well. So, in terms of the Drivers' Championship, we have a 16 point lead over Sergio Satakamera going into the fourth round of Germany. Louis Dadraz is 30, 34 points. Ganyu Zhu is now starting to build up a, 
a good tally as he moves ahead of Nick De Vries. Had a poor weekend. They're both 47. Jack Aitken moves into sixth place, but it is some 50 points behind. And Latifi and Huber at seventh and eighth. Schumacher down to ninth with some reliability issues for him. In terms of the uh, team's championship, we have a 26-point lead over Dams. But obviously, that, that can be reduced in just literally one race. Carling are third but they're 60 points behind so it's looking like a bit there and Sauber sort of extend their lead over Trident at the bottom in the fight to avoid the wooden spoon. Campos of course a big move up into fifth place four points behind uh, Carling there. As we move now to our sponsor event five, fl five red lights ago and away we go for this sponsor event we qualified third on the grid and that moves up to second as we're coming through the first corner of sequence now in Lewis Hamilton's uh, 2008 McLaren as yes we're moving through Baggots and Beckett's now we've got the Williams and the Williams 2003 and the Ferrari 2004 both fighting out with V10s and they of course are super quick on there it look at the closing speed of that Ferrari as we move to lap three and it's really going to be a matter of holding on. The Red Bull looks like it's comfortable around here. Got enough downforce to fend off everybody. But our car is really starting to struggle. If we approach a back marker. The 72 Lotus. Um, and that whole. And I think if it hadn't been for that car. We would probably have been a sitting duck. Um, on the back straight. As it holds up. Um, everybody else. Surprisingly laps in a five lap race. But um, that's how much we've got over these 70s cars they are that slow um, but yes I will definitely take P2 a podium position in a sponsor event is never never too bad and that's going to round off this video I know it's been a little bit hit and miss with the content but there really wasn't that much in either the sprint race the majority of this was in the feature, feature race where we did make those overtakes and it was crucial that we got up into uh, fourth position but yes I'm going to leave it there Let, if you have enjoyed this video then leave a like subscribe to the channel if you need to see more episodes of the mighty monos when they come out but until the next VR6 time take care thank you so much for watching enjoy your day and goodbye